My name is Osman Işçi and currently I am the General Secretary of the Human Rights Association. I have joined the association 13 years ago, of course. And I am in charge of operations in the organization and I am coordinating our activities with 40 branches across the country. The Human Rights Association, IHD, regarding the goals and demands of my organization. Human Rights Association is the oldest and the biggest human rights organization in Turkey. In fact, it is the first democratic civil society organization that was established after the military coup in 1980. We have one clear objective. It is dignity justice and truth for everyone and we formulate this uh, goals and demands as follows we say human rights and freedoms are for everyone and everyone is entitled to have such rights that is the formulation of our goals so we are struggling for protection and promotion of all rights for everyone with no exception and we are dealing with four main activities. The first one is we document human rights violations in Turkey on a daily basis. That means we have a team of documentation in our office and in all our branches. They are scanning media, local and national media, for human rights violation reports. Plus, we receive applications from the citizens who are claiming human rights violations or who think that their rights are violated. So we have this documentation that is the key activity for us and for any conventional human rights organization. In addition to documentation, we are providing free legal and medical assistance to those who are in need of such services. Of course, such services require human resources, financial resources, so we provide such services within the scope and capacity of the organization. As for number three of main activities, we conduct advocacy activities at the national level and international level before the authorities in Turkey, namely the parliament, the ministries, governors, MPs, etc., and also at the international level like the UN, United Nations, particularly for the Human Rights Office, the Council of Europe, the European Commission, European Union, and also other international bodies like the Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, Frontline Defenders, etc. And as for number four, we are conducting activities, general activities, to raise awareness about human rights principles and values in general. For this purpose, we organize panels, conferences, meetings. We have trainings for our young activists and women activists mainly, and we have press conferences, etc. So these are the four main areas that we are active. Of course, we since we are the oldest and the biggest human rights organization, we are dealing with all human rights issues. We have a holistic approach with regard to the human rights principles. That means if there is any issue that we are not dealing with, it is not because of our human rights perspective or philosophy, but because of lack of human resources, lack of financial resources. We are dealing with the Kurdish issue, the peace issue. We are dealing with gender rights, freedom of expression, prison issues, environmental issues, children's rights, disabled rights, pedestrian rights, etc. So we are dealing with all human rights categories. Again, I need to repeat that it is related to our human resources if we are not dealing with any issue related to human rights in Turkey. And for this purpose, we have joined several international organizations, namely the International Federation for Human Rights, FIDH, based in Paris, and we are also a member organization of the Euro-Mediterranean Human Rights Network, based in Copenhagen, and also the Euromed Federation for Enforced Disappearances. These three organizations are our uh, federations that we have joined. At the national level, we have 
either established national organizations, platforms such as the Human Rights Joint Platform, the Human Rights Foundation of Turkey for the torture and rehabilitation purposes, children rights platform, or we have joined platforms for human rights like the migration rights or the democracy issues, etc. So we are dealing with all these issues because for us, human rights and democracy are intermingled and you cannot separate these two concepts. And we are dealing with democratic issues in this country and we are also dealing with human rights in this country. So we cannot separate them. We are dealing with these two issues or problems related to these two concepts at the same time. So we are struggling for all these issues. The human rights situation has never been ideal in my country, Turkey, unfortunately. This is why we are still active. When our founders established the Human Rights Association, they were thinking that there would be no need for the organization for the association in the next 20 years. They were too optimistic, it seems, because now it is 33 years have passed and we are still active. And to me, this organization will be active maybe in the next 70, 80 years, maybe 100 years in the future. So since the situation has never been ideal with regard to the human rights situation in Turkey, we have been dealing with all these issues, but there are some turning points in the history of this country. For example, for the current period, the turning point is the military coup attempt and the declaration of the state of emergency, because after the state of emergency has been declared, what we have seen is that there are practices and policies that violate the ban on torture and rehabilitation. That is one key problem that we see that there has been a dramatic increase in this torture and rehabilitation, torture and ill treatment practices. The other issue is that there is no freedom of expression any longer. When I say there is no, I mean it is almost impossible to express any dissenting voice, any oppositional ideas and opinions on the issue, on any issues in the country. This is why we have so many journalists in prison. Now, currently, there are 137 journalists in prison and much more than are facing trials while they are not in prison, which is good. And in addition to that, we see that there is no freedom of assembly. All forms of public gatherings are subjected to the governor's permission. And usually they don't allow anyone to take the streets. And if people insist on this, if people are insisting on taking the streets, then security officers use excessive violence and to from our perspective, this use of excessive violence amounts to torture and re, uh, torture and ill treatment practices. In of course, these are the key issues, but we see that there is also the Kurdish issue, because Kurdish issue is one of the key problematic area. Anyone who is dealing with peace and Kurdish issue might be subject to judicial investigations, administrative investigations, or other forms of harassment, including physical attacks, verbal attacks, defamation, and also criminalization. And as you can imagine, since I'm talking about such huge problems and such grave human rights violations, almost all segments of the society, almost all groups within the society are subject are affected are being affected from such violations that is the problem unfortunately M majority of the society is suffering from such violations that we are currently observing in our country particularly since the state of emergency and for your information the state of emergency has been lifted last year july but we have a de facto state of emergency in the country still. The de facto state of emergency 
is a result of the law that the government has introduced in July 2018. The law number is 7145. Although the state of emergency had been lifted last year, July, this new law says governors, public authorities will have power, for example, to dismiss a public officer from the public service, to ban such public gatherings, which are under the um, constitutional guarantee and under the international, international instruments. And they have right to, for example, ban such public gatherings or they can launch judicial, administrative or judicial investigation. Because of this new law, which will be enforced for next three years, we are calling this period as de facto state of emergency. For example, now the governors have right to declare curfews in any part of the country, I mean, within the province, of course, because as you may know, the curfews issue was a serious problem back in July 2015 because the first, sorry, August 2015 because at that time the first curfew was declared and from August 2015 to July 2016 we had curfews across the south southeastern region of the country. We have prepared special reports for all these settlements for all these locations and we in, in addition to the human rights organizations like the human rights association there were other initiators like the academics for peace we and, and declared that we want peace and we are criticizing such practices this is what i mean when i say there is this de facto state of emergency because although the official state of emergency has been lifted now the govern the governors and the public authorities have still power to exercise such practices or such policies within the next three years the academics for peace demands and activities what we have done what the academics for peace has done it is an initiative that was established back in 2012. It was a period of hunger strikes in prisons and political prisoners who were either PKK member or accused of being a PKK member. So they were on hunger strike and they were dealing with, they were making some demands for the peace in the country from their perspective. At that time, some academics came together and said, we want peace and we as the academics of this country, we want to declare that we are ready to make contributions to the peace process in this country. Then this Academics for Peace initiative issued several other statements for different issues within the country, not only for the Kurdish issue, but for other social problems. But as for this campaign, the last campaign, during the curfews, there were serious allegations regarding the human rights violations. And there were reports, there were media reports. And in order to make contributions to any solution, any peaceful solution in the country, the Academics for Peace circulated a statement which says we will not be a party to this crime. And the document, the statement says there are accusations, allegations that human rights violations occur under the curfews. And we want to declare that these allegations, accusations need to be investigated effectively and there is need for civilian observers third eye on this and we want that there is time for peace in the country. That was the statement, that was the demand and that was the Academics for Peace initiative. However, we launched this uh, statement on 11th of January in 2016. However, as a result of the reaction from the authorities, particularly the president of this country, 
We were subject to the administrative investigations. I personally, for example, was subject to the three administrative investigations in a month after this investigation, after this peace petition. Hundreds of our colleagues were dismissed from the public service by an emergency decree law, like including myself. And we had to leave, some of our colleagues had to leave this country. Some of them had to get retired, although they have they had right to work still. So this initiative demands peace, demands accountability and transparency. These are the key issues for any citizens in any country, because we make such demands from the government, not from other organizations. So we make these demands and we were subjected to serious problems. The Kurdish issue, as you may know, it is an issue there are about 20 million Kurds in this country, and I am Kurdish as well. I am Kurdish as well. And we are demanding equal citizenship in this country. However, such demands were subjected to some problems, including killings, torture, and imprisonments. But the main problem is denial of our rights, denial of this recognition of such rights in the constitution, the founding document of the country. So our rights are denied in this country. I mean, our education in mother tongue, our cultural rights are denied. Even in the past, even our existence was not recognized by the authorities. Now it, our existence are recognized, is recognized, but still we are facing problems with, with regard to the exercising such rights. That is the problem. That is the problem for us. And as you may know, there is also this illegal organization called PKK, which was, which has been struggling or which has joined and launched an armed struggle back in 70s and then 80s, 90s. And as a result of this, more than 40,000 people lost their lives in the armed conflict that includes civilians, security officers, gendarmerie, police officers, paid village guards, or armed militants. In that period, more than 3,000 villages were evicted. That means people had to leave their houses, and they became internally displaced people, IDP. We are talking about millions of people who had to leave their house. So it's a long issue, more than four decades, that people are demanding their rights, and their rights are not recognized by the uh, law and authorities. There is also this illegal organization, which is mm, joining and which is conducting an armed struggle, etc. So it is complicated. It is a deep problem. But what we know is that on the basis of our experience from other parts of the world, like South Africa, like Ireland and other uh, parts of the country, uh, part of the world, this problem can be solved through peaceful and democratic means. As, human rights, as the Human Rights Association, this is our position. We say the Kurdish issue is an issue of human rights and democracy, and it can be solved through democratic means, through human rights policies. This is, this is the position. But what we know is that, unfortunately, there are grave human rights violations. We are talking about enforced disappearances. We are talking about unknown murders. We are talking about long imprisonments for any demands for such rights. So this is the key issue for the uh, Kurdish problems or for the Kurdish issue. 